I was three, I wanted to be a ballerina. When I was four, I wanted to be a soccer player. And then a singer when I was five, which is ironic, because I cannot sing for the life of me. Well, I can, but I don't think you'd want to hear it. Who here remembers what they wanted to be when they were little? I mean, obviously, some of those dreams are a little unrealistic, because not all of us can walk on the moon like an astronaut. But sometimes, who wishes that they would have pursued those dreams? Does anyone go back to those times and try to think that certain point you try to think realistically about your career? Was one of the reasons you gave up on those dreams income, or did someone tell you that you should think about it? Was there a certain person who encouraged you with your dreams? Everyone has that one person or group who will encourage you to do great. All my teachers tell me that I'm going to do great in my life, but the people who really matter to me are the people who will encourage and support me. For example, Ms. Harper, the one you actually just met, she is so supportive and pushes me to the things I'm scared of. She actually helped me get into this talk. I would never have imagined myself speaking in front of an audience like this today with, if it wasn't for her. She is so supportive and pushes me to do things I'm scared of. I look up to her because when she was little, she wanted to be a teacher. She wanted to help other kids find their way. Despite all the challenges that came her way, she accomplished her goal. Not everyone is strong enough to say, hey, that's what I want to do with my life. Some people can't push through those boundaries to get to their independent ideas. In most cases, it's because they don't have this proper support team. When you were little, were you told to color inside the lines? Who wanted to color outside those lines? You know, normal kids, they color on paper. No, I used my grandfather's head. <laughs> <laughs> my parents have always been part of my support team in addition to my teacher. With everything I've dreamed, they've always encouraged me to achieve it, even if one week is a ballerina or another week a soccer player, which, by the way, lasted as long as a week and ended with major tears. I think that all those kids who colored outside the lines are the kids who are truly going to make a difference in this world. They weren't afraid of being called different. They pushed through those boundaries. For instance, artists. I look up to artists who didn't give up on their imagination or passion. When you just look at their art, you can see all the intricate details, and you can appreciate their perception just by looking at their painting. They have an incredible gift for thinking outside the box. Just look at Beethoven. He didn't give up on composing even though he was deaf. Though there are rules we must all follow, there are other rules of society that we should not let control us. I think that artists do a great job at pushing those boundaries and fulfilling their dreams. Now I'm going to be talking about those people who don't know what they want to do. Just a few pieces of advice. Don't be afraid to just take a day to daydream. Don't give yourself limitations. Don't say, I can't do this, but instead say, I can't do this yet. And this is where imagination comes in. Imagination is what keeps us young, is the ability to let your mind wander into the unthinkable. Just let this sit in your mind. Our existence depends on our imagination. If we didn't have it, there'd be no inventions, theories, or the advancements we have in technology today. If we didn't have our imagination, we wouldn't take challenges because we couldn't see ourselves winning. Everything we do is influenced by our imagination. If you are a leader or see yourself being a leader in the future, having a strong imagination is very important. Just look at some people who have changed the world. For instance, Martin Luther King Jr. He dreamed that one day little black boys and girls will be holding hands with little white boys and girls. He imagined that his words would help future generations, and they certainly did. Great leaders of the past mostly all have one thing in common. They all had a support team or mentor. Support team or mentor is always there to pick you up when you fall. When we think of some people who have changed the world, we don't really think about the steps that it took them to get to that point. In most cases, they didn't start with an idea and immediately acquire success. They experienced resistance, yet they persevered. For example, Amelia Earhart. When you think of Amelia Earhart, what's your first thought? How many of you thought, where is she? She made a huge advancement for women in aviation. How many of you thought of her successes? She found her mentor, Netta Snook, which was her first accomplishment. She then broke the women's altitude record and was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic. When we think of her, we need to think of her accomplishments rather than her end, not quite completing the final leg of her trip. When we think of ourselves, we also need to focus on our accomplishments rather than our failures. I interviewed 25 adults. Only six out of the 25 of them said that they actually followed their dreams of what they wanted to do in their middle school slash high school years. That means 19 people didn't follow their dreams. 
Most of them had the imagination, but didn't have the proper support team to help them accomplish those goals. The people who did follow their dreams, however, had teachers, support teams, and mentors to help them. Your support team or mentor can also be that one person who will go out of their way to help you figure out your path. They'll help you plan out your future and give you the appropriate classes or help you find scholarships, either in your field of interest, college of interest, or help you think outside the box and help you think of opportunities you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Of the six adults I interviewed who said they followed their dreams, they said they found a teacher at school and then a mentor in field to help them further their career path. Now, don't get me wrong, it wasn't easy for these six people. They pushed through the resistance that came their way. There are always going to be negative people who try and bring you down. Ignore them. Try and find a safe environment, a circle of people who will value your ideas and encourage you to pursue your dreams. We experience negative people every day. It takes a lot to ignore them and not let them affect you. Think of one person who always has something negative to say, either about school, work, or even the weather. Don't let one comment steer you away from the path you are destined to be on. Their negativity may affect you for a little bit, and that's normal. Let them say what they need to say, but fight the urge to give in to that negativity. Look for your support team. It can be friends, family members, temple, synagogue, church, therapist, or even your school counselor. Your support group will always bring you back around to your positive thinking. And they'll help you find solutions to potential obstacles. Don't forget, though, you also have to be part of their support system. We can't expect to receive support without giving our support in return. Growing up, children are resilient. They get right back up after they fall down. How many times have you told a child no, and they keep doing exactly what you just told them not to do? That's how we need to be with our dreams. We need to be more like children in their resilience. If we experience a bump on the road, go back to your support team, and they'll put you back on track. I remember when I was a little tiny kid, I'd mix such simple things into anything I wanted with the power of my mind. I would turn a book as a bed for my dolls, and I would turn a box into a spaceship. As you can see, I really loved boxes. <laughs> How do we go from imagining we can do or be anything we want, imagining one career, to being like the 19 people who followed different paths and different careers? It brought me so much joy just to use my imagination. Imagination is so important for child's development, and by playing, it helps them use more of it. They can be anyone or do anything. And I know you're probably wondering, well, how do we teach imagination? It's not something you can necessarily teach. You can definitely model it, but you can't imagine for someone else. You have to let them use their imagination because only they can control it. It is the one thing that is truly ours. Our minds help us push boundaries that were not pushed before. It helps other people think beyond themselves and challenge what is found normal. Sadly, I have noticed as I grew up, school is mainly focused in putting pressure on our grades. We don't have time to just create. It's hard for me to sit down and create art when I know I have a ton of assignments that are due soon. Don't get me wrong, my grades are important to me, but it has gone to the point where I'm constantly stressing out and I don't have time to just think. Imagination and creativity relieve stress. The things you can create are endless. When I get overwhelmed or stressed with school, something that I find comforting is my mind. It makes me feel safe. No one will know or judge me on my thoughts. It helps me escape from reality in a way. Different people can do different things to make themselves feel safe or calm. Some channel into something, read to escape, or put down their thoughts onto writing. Now, I don't read as often as I'd like to, but when I do read, I love the thought of envisioning what someone else wrote come to life in my own way. You can feel personally connected to the characters and settings, and you can find all the similarities and differences. With reading, you can escape to a whole other world. Our minds help us connect us to other people and connect us to understand ourselves on a deeper level. Did you know that your imagination can impact your emotions? It can determine whether you see things positively or negatively. Negativity is what we turn to most of the time when we're scared of results. I admit, I sometimes find myself thinking of the worst possible outcome, believing it will prepare me either way. But I should start thinking positively. Being negative is so much easier than being positive. But let's fight that impulse. Let's challenge ourselves to be positive, regardless of how scary we may be of the result. I think that the key to going far in life is by dreaming. My dream is for this talk to at least impact one person's life. I want for you guys to find that one thing that you're truly passionate about. 
Go chase that dream no matter how scary it may be. Chasing your dreams can be so terrifying and we often fail to follow them because we are so scared that we will put our heart and soul into it and we won't succeed. But even if it's scary, we need to be brave and fearless. We need to put ourselves out there. If we fail, we need to be resilient and try again or try something else until we find what that one thing is. Don't give up. When you find what that one passion or dream is, do it for yourself, not for your friends or your family. Do it because you love it. Morgan Freeman said, we are all dying, but only a small select few are truly living. Be the person who is living their dreams. Take that leap of faith. Those who, don't color, those who color inside the lines, those who don't follow their dreams, these people are simply going through the motions of life. Don't make me come back in a few years and find out that you are like the 19 people who didn't follow their dreams. I challenge you to use your imagination. Find your dream, find your support system, and then go after that dream. If you can dream it, you can achieve it. I'm going to do this. Who's with me?